So there are a few special functions that I want to talk about here for, for a little bit. Uh, as I said back at the beginning of this section, uh, functions really aren't the point of, of this chapter, uh, but these are going to be important as we go forward. You've probably seen all of them already. Uh, I, I hope you have. So uh, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about them. I just want to kind of bring them back uh, kind of up into the front of your mind since we are going to be using them. The first one is this so-called identity function, right? It's a function that goes from a set to itself, and it does that by mapping every element to itself. It literally makes no change uh, to the to the input values. Uh, hopefully, you can convince yourself pretty quickly that this uh, function is both one to one and onto. If we pick any a from the second set, well, it's the same A from the first set that gets mapped to it. Uh, and the only way two points can have the same Y value is if they are the same, uh, the same values from the domain. So the, the second thing that I, I want to kind of bring back to your attention is this idea of an inverse function. Right, so if we start with a function F, and that function is a one-to-one -one correspondence. That's a little stronger than, than what you, you uh, the way you may have seen this defined in an algebra or pre-calculus class. There you usually just require that it's one-to-one. -one, right? But we're specifically focusing on these one-to-one -one correspondences, so that's why uh, I, I made our definition here a little bit stronger. Then the function going from B back to A that has this special property here, g of f of a is equal to a, is called the inverse of f, and it's written g with this superscript negative 1, just like you're used to seeing. So let's label these sets. Suppose I call this one a and this one b. Then the function f is going this way, and the function g, which is the inverse, is going the other way. What our definition is saying is that if I pick a point out of B, right, out of the domain of the G function, well, this function has to be mapped to one and only one value back in A by the original F function because A is one to one and onto. So we can think of this input value for B, uh, for G, as being equal to f of b. So what our definition is saying is that if we take this value and we go back the other way, right, we apply the g function to it, then we have to get back to where we started. All right, so in a sense, inverse functions, uh, you can think of them as being the reverse of the original function, or you can think of them as kind of undoing the original function. If you take a point from the original domain, apply the first function to it, right, then the inverse function has to undo that operation. It has to take you back to where you came from. So uh, again, uh, we're focusing on this one-to-one -one correspondence idea, right? So if the original function is a one-to-one -one correspondence, then the inverse function is also a one-to-one -one correspondence. In other words, if, if f is one-to-one -one and onto, then so is the inverse. Right? And you, you can see this again pretty quickly, I think. If we pick, let me clean this up just a little bit. If we pick two values from the domain of G, say W and X, they have to be mapped to different values of A because if they didn't, if they both went to the same value, then the original function F would not have been one to one, which we're assuming it is. And to see that uh, G is onto, Pick two value. Uh, pick a value from over here in A. Right, well, for G to be onto, there must be a value 
and B that gets mapped to it. And again, based on the definition of a function, because this is the domain of F, every value over here has to get sent somewhere on the other side. So if F is a one-to-one -one correspondence, then so is its inverse. So the last special kind of function I want to talk about here is what's called the composition of two functions. And the composition is, it's kind of a shortcut, right? We're starting with two functions, f and g, and we're creating a new function formed by taking one of those functions of the other. That's this g of x part. And we write that as g with this circle here. So to illustrate this, if we let this set be a, we'll let the middle one be b, and the, uh, the right-hand one be c, All right? Then our function f is going from a to b, and our function g is going from b to c. So the idea here is, is if we pick something out of a and find its image, right? This is f of a. And then if we apply g to this, we end up over here in C with a point, a value that is G of F of A. So what a composite function does is it does this for the entire function rather than uh, just some individual points. So these compositions, uh, F, F is a one-to-one -one correspondence and g is a one-to-one -one correspondence because again those are the special kinds of functions we're talking about in, in the context of discrete math and set theory then so is their composition and to see this uh right we need to show two things we need to show one-to-one -one and onto so if we take two different points here in a because f is one-to-one -one, it has to take these to two different points in B. And then because, again, G is one-to-one, -one, G has to take these two values to two different points in C. So the two, the two base functions being one-to-one -one makes the composition one-to-one -one as well. Right, and to C onto, well, pick... Uh, some value in C and because G is onto there has to be a value in G a single value that is the pre-image of that one and again because F is also onto there has to be a value in A that is the pre-image of that value with f. Okay, well, so since every value in C has a pre-image back here in A, which would be the domain of the composite function, right, this composition is onto as well. All right, so now we've got uh, s several examples of uh, not, not just specific functions with the identity function, but with new functions that we can either build or derive from existing functions, like the inverse and the composition. Um, now we're ready to, tr to turn our attention back to set theory and see how we can use these new concepts to compare the sizes of two different sets.